Anti-Afro Svengalis. Listen, everybody, this is a great opportunity for me to revisit some setup guidelines I have for this channel. If you have never heard me speak on these issues before, and I'm quite sure that's the case because there are people continuing to subscribe to the channel. And I absolutely want to thank all of you, those who have continued to move forward with me on this mission and provide support for our purpose and to me personally, I am eternally grateful. Don't underestimate the significance of your support. It is indeed appreciated. Let's get right to it, folks. I'm going to talk to you about a very unfortunate phenomenon or outcome of Umar Johnson. He has fueled this, what I call live stream lackey syndrome. And the live stream lackey syndrome is in stark contrast to what this channel represents. But unfortunately, there's an effort to suck this channel and to suck me into that whole scenario. So I'm just reasserting some boundaries so we can make sure here we don't succumb to any of the fallout resulting from the live stream lackey syndrome. Now, what exactly do I mean by live stream lackey syndrome? Is when there's an effort to pull you into scenarios that you have absolutely no involvement with, whether it's something that's occurred in the past, whether it's something that's continuing, when you're not even there, you are held accountable for things that you have absolutely no part in. Of course, you see this occurring on live streams and the origins are like the get rich quick, get popular quick syndrome. And this is what Umar Johnson created because he languished for many years, for many years trying to find a niche to scam. And when he found that niche, he tried to pretend that it was get rich quick, that he was lucky, that he had all these skills. And he tried to even make it appear that he had been rocking like this the whole time. And we know it isn't true, people. So when people saw Umar Johnson appearing to have supporters, so there's people still really get irritated thinking Umar Johnson has massive amounts of support. We're not saying Umar Johnson doesn't have supporters, but he thrived and he literally survived on his effort to convince people he indeed had this massive amount of support. So when people see Umar, they saw the reaction to Umar and his scamming. And again, my initial entry into the Umar Johnson situation was because he was perping as a therapist. It wasn't about a school. Other people were aware of that. It was initially on the ground first, the strategies to contain and alert people to who Umar Johnson really was. But Umar was intent on creating this persona that he was some well-known person with all these connections. So when people like anti-fraud warriors and affiliates started really focusing on addressing Umar Johnson's fallacy existence, people for some reason want to try to classify this as a position of status that they want to overtake. They assign blame to us for everything. And they have this perception, if only I can aspire to that level of recognition, I will have made it. And it's such a fallacy. There is no level to aspire to. We're simply doing 
what we feel in our hearts is the right thing to do and we're motivated. And trust you me, every single one of us has a joined objective and a distinct slash unique, unique perspective and goal and experience with Umar. I never met Umar, but I have had experiences with him. No anti-fraud warrior or affiliate has had the same experience. They are driven for the uniform goal and the individualized personal goals and what Umar Johnson's interaction and experience with them has been, whether it's been meeting him in person, because there are people who are anti-fraud warriors or affiliates who have met Umar Johnson. Most important, there are people who've known Umar Johnson let me see the longest person. It's probably going to be about 17 years. They know Umar Johnson people. This person is not on YouTube. So don't try to go searching for this person and other multiple years. They have known Umar. They know, no Umar people come on before he got this facade going that he has now, but the live stream lackey syndrome really is trying to achieve something that doesn't even exist. This is why they continue to place anti-fraud warriors and affiliates in this position of blame for everything while they try to capture something that isn't even there, a status. There's nothing wrong with people wanting to build a YouTube channel but the process by which the people are going about it, people, I'm telling you, this is some bizarre shit. It's just, it's unbelievable. That's why I'm reasserting the boundary for this page. Now, before I go on, I want to direct you. This is a great example of how I'm asserting a boundary or reasserting a boundary. I'm 99% sure this video is the correct one. I have it posted the link on the bottom, click on this video and look for Rev G's uh, posting. When you go to Rev G's comments, click them on. There's like, I think eight or nine comments. And I want you to read the comments and tell me what stands out. Something stands out as very unusual. Something that you probably have never seen on this channel before. I deliberately allowed that person to comment because I was trying to show you the reason why I do not participate in the vast majority of these live streams because they're infected with the live stream lackey syndrome. And let me tell you something. I hope I'm not offending you because there is a distinction between a live stream that's been infected by the lackey syndrome and one that isn't. Even when you have this amount of infection going on, there are still people there who aren't classified as being partial to that syndrome. People can go around and be on live streams all day long, but they're going to give input. They're going to maybe ask questions. They're maybe going to make demands, but they're not assuming a position a false loyalty to the hottest, newest live stream. That's what the live stream lackey syndrome is. Let me further explain because this really violates one of my strongest beliefs. Loyalty is important and everybody has their own perception of loyalty. But let me explain to you what loyalty means to me since I'm you know, talking here. And I'm reasserting these boundaries. If someone, and I'm going to use myself as an example, has been on this page for since the time it started, and they've always told me, you're rocking with anti Afro Svengalis. Yes, sister, you got it going on. They are showing their support. Does that mean they can't ever say one day, you know what, I'm out of here, forget you? No, you can go anytime. Here's what I want to say though it is not possible to declare loyalty, support, and I'll go to the mat. I'll go to the ends of the earth for you. 
And then you turn around and say it to the same person who you're fully aware made death threats against me, has tried to track me down, has threatened to sexually assault me and sexually torture me. Can you go on that person's live stream and make that declaration of support and be credible? Obviously you can't. That is my position. And the same thing goes for someone who is aware of that behavior and tries to claim he or she can be loyal to both. That to me is insanity. I will never accept that. That is a very dangerous position to be in for both people who claim they have a supporter and it's dangerous for the person who assumes the position. But guess what? People are free to do that. I am just saying that is not something I would ever accept here. And if I ever encounter someone who has claimed they can divide loyalty like that, they're going to be straight away blocked because I wouldn't have anything to do with someone like that. But that's what Umar has created, this false perception that he's this important man. Everybody's trying to take him down and the people who happen to have pages that are trying to simply get out Umar 411 information are put in a position of false worship as targets that must be taken down. I got to overtake that person. I got to do better than that person. So what do I do? I got to get my live stream going and I have to make sure I'm going to be talking about this person and get all the traffic over here so I can build my channel. And I'm going to try to build the channel by doing what? Bridging a gap? Now, by now, hopefully you went over to see what I referred to, the message. The message is out of place. I allowed that message on to show you what I am talking about. We have friends that say, oh, you know, you done lost your mind. Uh, did, did you have a concussion? You know, they're saying that to you, they're kidding around. This person is literally making the statement that I'm crazy and wants to assert that she's going to be involved with building a bridge. We don't allow that here. When people are allowed to comment here, they do not verbally abuse each other. And this is someone as a guest coming on who was allowed to come on and it just comes in here and look what the statements are. So do you see why I do not participate in essentially 97% of these live streams? What purpose? Oh, here's the purpose. Let's not kid ourselves. It involves blind faith. It involves when you get busted up and dogged out. Here come the tears, the devastation. It's the repeated cycle. And for your information, for anyone who cares to know, I have never experienced this syndrome here, blind faith, tears, and devastation. No, there has never been a single instance with anti-fraud warriors where somebody's personal business got put out like from the email. So this garbage about Officer Pissberry having, there's no impact, no impact whatsoever. None. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to say it. I'm just so sick of this Officer Pissberry blown up, absolutely irrelevant freak. Check it out. He did exactly what I demanded that he do. Block the son of a bitches if you want me on your channel. I am not leaving any comments for anybody to attack me. So let's start right there. <laughs> okay. Furthermore, this is the same dude. And you would think the way these live stream lackeys would love to have the story told. They would love it if I was the person who he picked up or went out with. He said he went out with this woman, brought her back to his apartment, 
and were drinking and she peed the bed. <laughs> Those are his words. Quote, she peed the bed. Does anybody think that she probably did that on purpose? <laughs> and he said he kicked her out. She was probably happy. But the, but the looks of it, when you hear the story told, you think it was me. <laughs> and then the coward, then the coward, I don't care. I'm going to get freaking slammed for this and not by him because I don't care what he says. I don't care. He is so gutless that after he did what he did, like he released the emails, and I freaking don't care. There was nothing there. He was so brave that he went and created a whole new channel. No, you can create any number of channels that you want, but a brave soul would keep the same screen name and put all the videos on that channel because that's the name he was known by. I call him Officer Pissberry. I'm not using the other name, but he makes up a whole new channel calling me all kinds of bitches, right? <laughs> As a, and someone had seen, I wasn't even in the live stream. Someone sent me the, the what do you call it? The screen thing. It was his comments. And then he's sending me emails. After this happened, he continued to send me emails, trying to talk to me, trying to engage me. And I eventually put the email in, in um, spam. He had called me a bitch too by the email because I'm not responding to him. I believe what the anti-fraud warriors and affiliates were, were thinking when he kept sending me these emails, he just wanted any sort of response he could get. He didn't care what kind of response it would be because if I responded, he could say, look, she responded. And then you can see the message on the bottom about um, what was the first message? Oh, does that mean we're not going to get married in two years? It was completely made up. There was nothing even remotely <laughs> somebody that I have communicated with for basically a week. If that, he was trying to set up a scenario where he'd get a response to the ridiculous claims he was making. This is what I want to say. He was so scared that he made up a different channel and was calling me all kinds of names on it. Whatever. I also want to make it clear, any female who wants to bring up Officer Pissberry, you're welcome. I guess go to his page and see if he can give you a ticket so you can lay up in his piss-filled mattress, okay? Have fun with Officer Pissberry. He's all yours. I'm just giving you one example among many in support of why I don't even consider going places where this type of madness occurs ridiculousness, immaturity, and more specifically lies. If other people want to go, go. I'm just letting you know the standard that I'm setting for myself and for people who want to participate here. That if you want to claim support for one element that is anti-violence and then you claim to support another element that's threatening to kill the very person or threaten the other person in any regard that you claim to support the two can't peacefully coexist now before i depart i'm going to leave you with a clip from the real housewives of atlanta i actually never watched the show but there have been some pretty interesting clips that have popped up on social media. This is another reflection of what I've illustrated in this video. People have these perceptions of people's positions and no matter how hard you try to convince the person reality is something else, they're going to stick with it. Therefore, they try all types of strategies 
To do what? Take you down. Take you down from what, people? It's so skewed. Nonetheless, my parting words will always ring true. Fire, beware. Phil from Everett, Washington says, do Phaedra and Nini know each other from Athens or not? Phaedra said she did, but Nini clearly doesn't seem to know or like Phaedra very much. She calls her fake dra. Do you guys know each other? Yes, I know Nini. I didn't know Phaedra in Athens. And uh, the reason I said Phaedra was because Phaedra had stated in one of her uh, interviews that we had grown up together in Athens. And I said, we didn't grow up together. We didn't play together. Um, I graduated high school. She entered high school. We weren't even in at the same time. So that's why I said that, because I thought that she was sending a fake message out. We didn't go to high school together. No, nope. we didn't, because she's older than me. I am However, just a few years. Well, we won't go there, but uh, we can. <laughs> <laughs> well, you weren't in high school with me. Uh, you no. were older than my oldest brother, so we weren't. I'm 43 in high to be exact. Mm. I'm 43 to okay. be exact. All right, well, <laughs> Actually, I'm, I just turned 43. Okay, well, congratulations. Happy yeah. birthday. However, I do know you from Athens, because Athens is a very small town. We only have two high schools, three middle schools. So most people know everybody. But see, the thing is, Phaedra, we don't know each other. Like, we never hung out. No, I'm not uh, saying we hung that kind of out, well, because there's I'm too much saying, age difference. I wouldn't try to act like I know somebody and don't know them. Are you trying to say I was acting like I knew you and I didn't know you? I never knew your brothers and sisters. You know my brother Jacques, because y'all have talked to him I, ta I never time. knew him, uh, He Faith. was in school with you, Nene. I don't remember who you are. I don't even know who he is, child. How I'm did you call him? Three. I don't remember people in high school. Oh, you but you don't know me, though. But you knew me well enough to call me. I didn't know you. I didn't know you. I but you knew me well enough to call me and yes, ask me about Yes, I knew you well enough to call you because your name was Phaedra, but I don't know you. Okay, So let's right. be clear. I still don't know you.